Well, Federated Investors is a global investment firm with $358 billion of assets under management. And year-to-date, its stock is up marginally, outperforming other asset managers, but lagging the broader market. Well, the president and CEO, Chris Donahue, says that investors are at the beginning of a re-risking environment, and he is positioning Federated to take advantage of that. And he joins us now here, live in the studio with more. Chris, it's such a pleasure to have you in. Thanks for joining us today. Well, thank you very much, Lisa. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, let's talk about re-risking. Is there a shift? We saw this a little bit, I think, at the end of last year. was definitely in the fixed income markets. was a desire for yield and a willingness to really take any risk to get it. It's been a tough market, though, so far this year. A lot going on, of course, overseas. So explain the re-risking. Well, uh, from an industry standpoint, we've seen it on the stock side where U.S. stock funds during the first quarter have gone to positive, whereas all last year they were negative. Are you talking in terms of inflows? And this is on the industry on flows, yes. And on balanced funds, the accumulation of flows in balanced funds this year so far equals what the whole of last year was. And though the flows on fixed income are still strong, they're much less than they were last year. And we're seeing that same reflection in Federated's numbers, where we're seeing a strong flows on fixed income, but not what they were before, and a different shift of look at the uh, individual stock funds. For example, the strongest performer this year is our strategic value dividend fund, which is, you can feel it being a little step out the yield curve from going from fixed income to stocks, but stocks with heavy dividend components. Are you able to trace the, where the flows are going from and to? Are you able to see that it's coming out of a fixed income fund and going into a dividend value fund? Lisa, because we go through intermediaries and deal with all of our accounts on an omnibus basis, we cannot see that precise flow. But we can see it in terms of the macros, in terms of the funds, but not the pre precise flow. Well, we've had events in North Africa and the Middle East. We have seen oil rise, what, 35%, I think, mm -hmm. since um, events in Egypt erupted initially at the beginning of the year. We've seen events, of course, in Japan. How has that affected investor sentiment? Are you starting to see evidence of maybe risk aversion? Because, because, Lisa, we go through intermediaries, there's an intelligent speed bump between the investor and a market decision. And this slows things on the way out and gives consideration on the way in. So that, for example, our view that the resiliency of the Japanese people is going to enable them to solve their problems will be able to be communicated through our investor base, the intermediary, and the ultimate customer. And that's the kind of thing we want, is savvy, intelligent decisions running through to the ultimate investor. And so our view is, if you asked our house view, it's that, you know, we're going to see an S&P in the 1450 range this year. And we remain optimistic about the market to that extent. Let's talk about the new funds you're launching. And um, is this really driven by investor appetite or where you see investment opportunity? It, it is a beautiful confluence of both. One, of course, is a low duration product, which basically means we're buying uh, securities bonds that have a, f uh, a fixed net asset value and the rate floats. And That's you the get floating trade. rate strategic income fund. The floating rate strategic income fund. And it has a component of trade finance in it, too. So it, it basically has about a 3% coupon on it now. And people can get into it. And then when, as and if rates go up, they won't get killed on the downside. What's the unconstrained bond fund? The unconstrained that bond fund. That sounds risky. Well, it, it could be, but the idea is to limit risk. The idea of being unconstrained is exactly designed to take care of all of the opportunities and all the balancing available in the world. And so that's what that is. And that's for the kind of investor that wants to turn over the bond management uh, to uh, somebody who knows what's going on in all corners of the world, all types of securities, a go-anywhere product, as compared to an investment advisor who is selecting the various sandboxes and wants a constrained product to various sandboxes. Now, the global equity fund, I, I, you know, seems to be self-explanatory, but I do want to put that in the context of where you see opportunity given so much volatility around the world at the moment. Well, it, it, it is volatility is interesting, but more important is the six billion people that live in other countries that are growing right now. I'm talking about India, Brazil. I'm talking about a lot of places like that. And so a global equity fund is designed to take advantage of those kinds of opportunities. And the people in the United States are seeing those as opportunities as we've seen in flows on international funds over last year and continuing into this year. 
All right, Chris, I want you to give me some perspective as a CEO. Being a CEO always gives you such an interesting vantage point. And what's very interesting about your role at Federated is it's sort of a family business, so to speak. Your father was a co-founder of Federated. You've worked there pretty much all your life. How are things today running a business as an asset manager different from your prior experience? Well, the, the primary difference, I would say, is the volatility and the necessity to be doing your homework and working on what's going on in the marketplace. It is a lot tougher to make it work. So we try to develop a franchise where with a component of money funds, stock funds, and bond funds, we are able to withstand the onslaughts in the market and have products that keep the franchise stable and all of the products viable. And that's pretty much the biggest challenge that we have. You know, we talk a lot about Dodd-Frank regulatory reform and how it Im impacts the banks, but how does it impact an asset manager? Well, Dodd-Frank uh, right now is not exactly fully impacting. There's some analysis going on um, by the Fed and others on whether or not who should be designated into the Dodd-Frank ambit. And so that's causing some, uh, some uh, issues. But there haven't been regulations published yet, so it's very challenging to figure out how it will be listed. Basically, Dodd-Frank calls for uh, banks over $50 billion to be listed, and then it's open-ended as to non-bank financial companies as to what will happen. So that's something you're keeping your eye on, but oh, not yes. something that's affecting your daily operations at the moment. Well said. All right. Thank you, Chris, for joining us. We appreciate the insight. That was Chris Donahue, President and CEO of Federated Investors. Okay.